Hi guys, Elle here. I'm gonna jump back into the YouTube Pagan Challenge. That's right, I like this week's question. I thought it was cool. Um, I also thought that after watching some of your guys' videos out there, like, um, I went to bunch, but Marwenna's and um, Crystal's from, um, you know, Femme, Butch, Femme, what the fuck is the name of your channel? Power Femme! <laughs> that, you know, you, you sort of both talked about how it was really difficult subject to talk about. This week's question, by the way, is what does deity or God or the divine mean to you? But anyway, you guys were talking about how fucking hard it was to talk about because you end up like meandering and going off on tangents and it's a really big fucking subject to cover. Um, and I was like, oh, I think I could do it. I could do that fine. And I've already filmed it like three times. I totally feel you guys. It is, it's a rough one. Um, yeah. Like, where do you even start? <laughs> Let's talk about God. Shit. It's serious. Um, so I guess I kind of, you know, I, I do, I've talked about this before. I identify, I would say sort of before things because I do, I sort of identify as a Norse pagan. It is not the complete definition of, of my spiritual beliefs though. Um, not at all. Uh, and I think maybe I haven't heard too many people's, um, explanations of God that I sort of really, really agree with. Um, so I wonder if that's, you know, there's the Norse pagan side of me, and then there's also the, the theosophic side. Um, and I, they, I feel like they fit together beautifully. To me, theosophy is, is universal. Like, it, it's, it's an outlook on cosmology that can be applied to fucking every religion, uh, every mythology, every path. Um, it's like like what Joseph Campbell did for mythology. You know, it's it's understanding that the universal that they're all the same. <laughs> it's like this this universal outline. You know, like maybe the hero's journey that he talks about, right, is applicable to every religion and every myth. Theosophy is too. So sort of my outlook on on God. Yeah, my my outlook on the divine and on deity and on God. Are a little bit more theosophic in their approach. So, I mean, a short answer, I swear this won't be a really long video, um, but short answer for me, deity is consciousness. God is consciousness. The divine is consciousness. It's all fucking consciousness. So we are all God essentially also. So that begs the question, you know, what the fuck are you doing? You're just worshiping yourself. Like, what, what are you doing? Um, I think when I refer to All Father is sort of Odin for me, and that is unity consciousness. That is great spirit. That is collective consciousness. It's, it's, we're a part of it, but it's greater than us. It's everything and everywhere, you know? Um, that that is sometimes what I'm talking about when I'm talking about deity. Um, what's sort of on my altar, Freya specifically, my, I guess you call her my matron. No, I don't like that word either. I guess you call her my matron deity though. Um, I, 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 she's part of that also, but she's not great spirit. You know, she is a step below that almost. Um, really for me, she is, Venus. She's the spirit of Venus and the planet, like literally the planet Venus, just as her body, really her physical body is the planet, just like my physical body is this body. Um, she is, exists in that, through that, and through that she protects and influences us here on earth and, and me and you specifically. Um, so that's sort of how I view her. Um, I don't think that she is as restricted to her body as, as we are, so she's sort of moving about. Um, but I do not have conversations with her face to face. You know, I know I talk about astral projection, that sort of thing. I've never had a, a, a chat with her. Um, although what I conceptualize her as a little bit more of a personal kind of a deity, you know? I like the stories about her and 
Um, although they're, they're metaphor for really that, that bigger process that I was talking about, how she influences us. You know, the, the jewel of, of Freya has to do more with, uh, the, with humankind, with our, our intellect and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoy that. Um, but yeah, I don't think God on whole, like when, when a, a Christian or something talks about God, I don't think that, you know, their idea of like a bearded, I know this isn't everybody, but the bearded man in the sky, that very personal sort of God who's anthropomorphized and all that. I don't, I don't identify with that. I don't jibe with that. I'm not sure, sure what that is really. That never made sense to me. Um, but the whole consciousness thing makes sense to me uh, and it ties in with you know what I'm trying to do what I think we're all really trying to do which is evolve and return home to that to be united with with God again uh, I think that we are just spiritual beings having a human experience um, and we've already worked ourselves up you know in, in theosophy there's there's this wonderful idea that you make seven rounds sort of through the seven globes, you can look all this shit up, um, where, where you work your way up from, from the mineral kingdom to the vegetable kingdom uh, to the human, animal, human, you know, and, and above and beyond. Um, and eventually you do, you, you, you embody, you manifest as, as like a planet, as, and then as the sun, like we really literally do evolve. Our, our consciousness grows into that. That's, that's what I believe. I mean, that's why I believe in, in reincarnation, even. It's, it's this, you, you keep evolving in, in your lives to, to grow and, and become God. That's the goal, and it's wonderful, and it's beautiful. Ooh, falling over. Um, you even manifest in, in different lives on different planes. I know I've talked about um, the, the astral plane before and traveling there, and then, of course, you have your physical sort of below that. Um, but it, it goes on. There's, oh, there's so many dimensions and planes and vibrational frequencies that we can, we can manifest on. Um, you have your mental planes, your causal, your, your causal planes, excuse me. Um, you have your booty planes, your Buddha planes, um, your Anupadaka, your Adi, your Akashic. I mean, oh, it's just, it's just endlessly fascinating. Um, and I really do do believe that there's a lot of truth there. It, it rings true for me, just like the Norse um, interpretation and way of looking at things rings true. It's like just using different words to describe the same goddamn thing. Um, but it makes a big difference, at least for me it did. Um, when when I, I read myths from, from other cultures, Greek myths, I don't feel like I don't break down into tears like I do when I read a Norse myth. That, that pagan poetry, man, it just, yeah, the, the words, the world, the ideas, uh, that, that way of thinking, the entire mindset, it just moves me to tears. That's how I knew this was the path for me, and these were the words that I was going to use to describe these things that I had really already sort of started looking into. Um, yeah, it just felt right. All right, I'm getting off track, too. But yeah, so we are all God, and uh, we are all a part of God. I think we are all oh, at the mercy of this universal will that exists to evolve. It's, it's innate. I think that, that, uh, that deity or the divine is the intelligent expression of, of nature, of, of natural law, you know? Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. <laughs> Come on the crazy ride with me. You know, the, the synchronicity, the, the perfection and the geometry even, that is, that is nature and reality and the entire world around us and how everything works in this, in this physical universe and beyond um, is for, for me an, an expression of all father of that great spirit of consciousness itself. Um, it, it makes sense, I think, when you, you start to understand the idea that, you know, as you evolve spiritually, you lose personality, you lose ego, 
and it's sort of a scary idea for me for a long time. Like I don't want to lose myself. But over the years and the, and the things that I've experienced, especially through astral projection and out-of-body experiences, um, I've come to sort of be excited by that idea. The idea of, of feeling as one with everything. Yeah, that pretty much makes up for, you know, <laughs> the loss of all of this personality shit, you know? Yeah, becoming part of that collective consciousness is is the goal, I think. And and that is divine. <laughs> There's a, an interesting sort of idea for me in, in Norse mythology, um, when, when I look at it, that it basically you have gods on, on one side and you have giants, giants on the other. And and for the most part in, in the Adas when they talk about giants, for me what they're referring to specifically is matter. Sometimes it's it's time or periods of time uh, when they mention giants, but but really it's it's matter. It's a god, you know, your 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 Aesir, especially your Aesir gods. There's Aesir and Vanner. Oh my god, I'm not gonna do a whole Norse mythology thing, I swear. Um, but you know, you have your god, your spirit, and you have matter, your giant, uh, and the two really can't so much exist without each other. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're, this is giant, this is my giant form, and, and I, me, what I really truly am that's going to survive this, this giant and battle this giant, if you will, is, um, is the god in me, you know. Uh, and real quick, too, I gotta say, science is sort of catching up to a theosophic and great spiritual ideas, right? Um, I'm sure lots of you are, are interested in, uh, you know, looking spiritually at things like quantum physics and, um, you know, unified field theory and, and entanglement. Uh, yeah, even the, what's that, that double slit electron experiment. You know, the, all of these ideas, really, they, they come, they, they're, they're the same thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, science is, is really starting to, to understand this, this kind of stuff more and, and more and more. And it's, it's cool to see that shift in, in public awareness of, of these things. Uh, and, and using that terminology, you know, this modern... Um, vocabulary for, for the same kinds of things is, is shit, it's fine, you know, you just gotta find what works for you, how you understand it. Um, for me, almost speaking of it scientifically, I can wrap my head around it, I can understand it, um, but it doesn't feel sacred, it doesn't feel special. That's when I turn to my Norse pagan side for, for that understanding and that emotional connection to, to spirituality. And even some theosophic terms, I guess. But theosophy sort of includes a lot of, of Hindu terms and a lot of, or they, they tend to use these things um, when, when they write and when they speak. Uh, and, and I don't feel that same understanding. I don't feel that same connection. Um, I take a lot of Buddhist ideas and I make them my own. I take, um, you know, I like to understand Hindu uh, mythology and cosmology and the same with the Greeks and the same with all over the place. It gets a little eclectic. Um, but, but the words, I don't know why I'm dwelling on this, this thing so much, what words you choose to understand things through. Um, but I think that's why even in the question, right, they had to say what's, whatever the question was, what's your opinion of God, deity, divine, and you could keep fucking going there, right? Um, the, the, the words you choose for these things can be very powerful for yourself, I think. Um, I hope that made sense. If not, leave a comment below and uh, I'll try and explain things a little bit better. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm done. Take care. I'll see you next time.